Okay, greeting you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's start the service by singing, God leads us alone. God leads us alone. In shady green pasture, so rich and so sweet, God leads his children along. Where the water could flow, but where we want to God leads his children along. Yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, yesterday, today, and forever. Go ahead. Wait. Okay, the second one. I've thought we had it in the folders. <coughs> It is well, yeah. Yeah, and we have it. Oh, how sweet the glorious message from them. The faith, faith, make them. Yesterday, today, forever. Thank you. 
Savior, we are so grateful to you, Lord, to know that you can change and you will never change. The Bible is saying that we are the same yesterday, today, and forever. That is why, Lord, you can come to, uh, to the help of a needy in the same way as you did yesterday in the year gone by. So we are coming, Lord, trusting in you and believing that, Lord, you can help us 
the same as he did with Moses, with uh, Elijah, with all your children, Lord, who are now waiting for us to be to come and to complete the great army of the Lord up there in heaven. Lord, we are coming to you now asking you forgiveness, Lord, of our shortcomings because you want to do, to perform every day what is pleasing to you. But we found a cause our way, lost the enemy, with so many snares in our way, with so many tricks he's putting, Lord, and sometimes we find ourselves on the wrong side of a, of a line, Lord. But we want to come back, to come back to this narrow way, to walk with you, Lord, and to do whatever you want us to do. So bless each one of us, Lord. Bless our hearts, Lord. Make us humble. Make us meek, Lord, in all our ways. Don't let, Lord, the enemy give us any wrong trust in ourselves, Lord, to know that, Lord, you can perform something and then even compete with the Lord because it is what he wants to do. It is what he's doing because he's expecting to be worshipped as the Lord himself, but he cannot and he will never be. So that is why, Lord, we are coming. You don't want to take his nature. We are your children. We have your own nature, Lord. This nature, Lord, will give us, Lord, to come and then to know that we are belonging to you. We have been created, Lord, just to bring praises and honor to your name. That is why, Lord, now we are asking you, Lord, to be with the one who are not with us tonight or this evening, Lord, who are at work or doing, Lord, delayed to be here for different reasons. Lord, we've come into in your heart. Start with us, Lord, and continue with us, Lord, and bless also our beloved one who are worshiping with us through this uh, way of internet lord lord bless them by listening to this word and may them lord also go, uh, go, go up go, uh, get some strength lord to go up in the in the faith to the service of the lord we have put all those things to your feet in uh, true the faith in our own the name of our lord and savior jesus christ we have spoken so amen amen we are going to sing one or two more hymns and then uh, we go to the word of the Lord. Pass me not, please. We don't want the Lord to pass us by because the time is so gone and we want to walk closely to him in this last steps of a journey for the Church of the Nations. Pass, <coughs> sorry. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior, in my humble
Amen. Lord, don't pass me by. This is the cry of uh, the blind Bartimaeus. Um, Okay, yes, I was going to sing near, near draw me near, but let's sing it. Have you any hope for Jesus? Have you any hope for Jesus? Have you any hope for Jesus? <coughs> yeah, I've only got word of a lot. If you ain't even so You are singing it in French too, but it's never having the same meaning. I don't know. In English, it does get, get something different. Let God be glorified. Can we stand up, please, for the word of God? Understand for the word of the Lord. And uh, 
We are in on a strong, very strong topic about the perseverance. And the Lord is adding things as he always does with uh, in our midst. And we, today I'm not going to take uh, much of 15, but let's go to second book of Corinthians, chapter 6. Second Corinthians, chapter 6. You are going to start from verse 7 to verse 10. But uh, I advise you to read the whole chapter when you get home. To read it over and over. Uh, I'm going because here. Um, Second Corinthians chapter 6. In him, English is written so different because I, I know I don't know where to start exactly. But if you don't mind, so let me start from verse 3. Because I have a problem to start here because I have a lot of commas, so I have to start somewhere else. We give no offense in any way, and no, in, in anything, far from, sorry. That our ministry may uh, that our ministry may not be blamed, but in all things we commanded ourselves as ministers of God. In much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonment, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fastings. By purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Amen. Let's take another scripture. In Genesis chapter 14, from verse 18 to 19. Genesis 14. From verse 18 to 19. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of the God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Bless be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. Bless be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. Let's pray again. Our Savior, our God, I'm so grateful, Lord, for leading me, inspiring me, Lord, to go to this scripture for the follow-up of this message about the perseverance. Because all your word is true, Lord. And there's nothing we can take out and say, but okay, this is not convenient, but it is all of it forming a block, a spiritual food for all your children. So, Lord, help me, Lord, to preach or to speak today in your behalf for the profit of each one of us. So that when we live here, Lord, we may say the Lord was not, was not in our midst while we were speaking. May our heart be touched. May our zeal be renewed. May our faith be strong. May our understanding be perfected. 
We hear just Lord begging you all those things. And sitting here, God, waiting for your guidelines, waiting for your advices, Lord, how to perform well during our journey before we get back home. We commit everything in your hand, Lord, as we have prayed so in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may say, be seated, please. Again, I'm greeting the church, the present church, physical church here, and the unseen church, which is online, all the people who will be following this preaching in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the most high name, as it is written in the book of Acts of Apostles, the only name given in heaven on earth, even beneath the earth, by which every man can be saved, is the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God never used any other name, name of a prophet, apostle, an angel, archangel, cherubim, or whoever, for the salvation of uh, mankind. But God chose, took this name, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is, uh, this is a great translation, but means in the Hebrew way, it is the Jehovah the Savior, Jehovah the Savior. Now this uh, scripture we just finished, I told you that our topic is the perseverance and how we can achieve our goals or the goals the Lord has fixed for each one of us. We were born in this earth as children of men. As we did read in the book of Job, I don't want to go back to all those scriptures we went through already, say that a man born of a woman his life is, uh, is uh, without ceasing troubled. He's going through many tribulations and sometimes wondering, why am I on earth? What did I do? Just something is coming on my mind of one brother I did meet some years ago. He said when they came to Christ, he wanted to make peace with the devil. He said, Satan, I don't have nothing against you. So don't have nothing against me. <laughs> so don't trouble me, I won't trouble you. And uh, as he days goes, goes by, he saw that the devil was not leaving him alone. So he told Satan, listen, I just wanted peace with you. <laughs> but as you are fighting me, I'm going to fight you back. How can you have a covenant with the devil about peace? He does no peace. He's a man of war. Or spirit of trouble because the Bible is saying that he's a tormentor his life it is to trouble the life of the believers to cause you to suffer to cause you to to regret why you are on earth <laughs> and then to, to curse God if he can push you to it extra limits but you're going to see today, God, by the grace of God, I took this message, if you want, you can listen to. It is uh, processing all things. This is British English, or processing everything for the people who are speaking American English. You know, it is going the same. You can listen to it. For my, I don't know how it is working with you. I noticed that God is uh, working with me in a different way from my mind. When I'm listening to a preaching, I'm receiving it, I'm receiving it in a different way than when I'm start sitting and studying it. Now, there I'm getting, getting deeper and deeper in the meaning of what God wants to say. I say, Lord, sometimes I'm just listening. But you know, listen, it is good to listen because it is keeping your spirit in the, in the mood of serving God. But maybe because I'm a minister, He's causing me to go to sit down to listen, to stop the tapes, or to stop the, 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 the computer, whatever, to listen again, to go in the Bible, to check again, to come back 
and lack of the understanding change and I get to some awesome meanings which I could not receive here. The story which you are going to listen here is Paul talking about him and the other ministers about their reputation and the deprivation of the daughter of the saint, Moses, to be deprived of, yeah, of things of this world and even sometimes spiritual things. He's saying that, okay, even people are looking at us like not having nothing, but still we make many rich. We, we possess everything. But when you go in this world, it is like we don't have nothing at all. And they are looking at us as dead, but not killed, but not killed. Not the people of sorrow, but we are rejoicing every day. It is like they show this thing spiritual and not spiritual, but just uh, uh, a mixture of, uh, of a life, in the life, sorry, of the believers. And sometimes a lot are wondering, but we are going to try to take it now in what you just read in uh, Genesis 14 about this man. About this man, Abraham, when he was called. Brothers and sisters, to understand exactly where God is leading us, we have to consider the man God called in the seasons as the same as ourselves in our due time, lifetime. Those people are not different to us. They were eating the same food, they were drinking the same water. And they came to know God in a way that we call them today, they were heroes of God. Something happened to them. Like this man, Abraham, he was just an ordinary man, living in his country. And when he was 75 years old, God spoke to him. Abraham, Abraham, let's go back to Genesis 12. Genesis 12, from verse 1, he got a calling from God, and he got a, he got a, a, a promise from God. The calling is, now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. This is a promise of God. I will bless you. Promise of God and make your name great. It was not the choice of Abraham to become a great man. It was a choice of God. It was the promise of God. It was the desire of God to make this man a great nation, to be blessed and to have a great name. And it shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in, all, in, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Abraham didn't, Abraham, it was Abraham first time. Abraham didn't, didn't request nothing, none of these things. He was just living. Maybe he was a farmer, helping his dad. God decided to make this, of this man what he wanted him to be. God decided what we know. Bible's blessing to the thing. Royal seed of God was going to come to him. The promise made in Eden was going to go to Abraham. Abraham didn't know nothing about it. Now, he obeyed and he left his homeland and came to, the, to Canaan to live uh, with his wife. But he took his father, he took his nephew, it is what, not what God did tell him. Let's follow it, sir. And what we can say that uh, the example of this man, Abraham, is exactly what God still, do, still does today. God is still calling the ordinary people to make them what they are not, they, were, they could not even expect. You know, sometimes I'm just thinking, when everything will be done, 
and uh, the devil put to put uh, to in captivity for thousand years. When was the great name in this world? We see the lamb who in this world, like uh, you know, in the time of Lazarus and Abraham. See the the beggars, the people with no no family in this world, standing with the Lord and be called the army of God. Amen. Can you imagine the surprise? That it can't be possible. This can't be. I know him. I walk with him in the way house. He was not worth to be a manager. And now he's there as a priest. Yes. It is not my choice. <laughs> it is not your choice. It is God's choice. And that is why even in, in uh, First Corinthians, you know that scripture. Chapter 1, verse 26, Moses. It is said this, First Corinthians chapter 1. I'm going to go slowly. Eh? Because as I said, there's no rush to be the word of the Lord. Let's take it slowly and try to digest it slowly. When you are receiving it, just have pray in your heart, Lord, let those things become reality for me too. But I may see your goodness. I'm starting with verse 26, but uh, maybe I won't read it all. For you see you, for you see you calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Can you understand? So what the people are calling noble in this world? What the people are calling, how you say it, uh, uh, mighty, according to the flesh, and there they won't be there. It is just the opposite. When you move to the world realm of life, it is the opposite of what is happening on this earth. The meek. Oh yes. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. What is saying? The meek of heart. Take my two. Uh, I'm going to come back to this Moses. Sorry, but uh, I'm, uh, I will make you just uh, move from one, one book to another. Have a Lord put things in me uh, to be preaching like that. Because I'm proving to the people that this is the word of God. This is true. See, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Can you understand? God called us the meek, the humble of heart, that the earth belongs to them. You see, you can say today, we are just like Abraham, we are going to go through it. He got to the promise that the Canaan land or the promised land was for him. But when he came, he was ever could look at him, say, well, this stranger, what he's doing here? When he came, he was not so rich. He became rich after. He was a poor man, a farmer. And the Bible is saying he was living under, under the tents. He just had no building. He, didn't, he did, could not compare himself to the kings which had the grounds. The, uh, the mighty men in the land. He was just the, but God called him uh, in a... Uh, 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 Genesis 13. Just please uh, uh, bear with me. Just write these things how it comes. And uh, uh, you can't read them because I'm just passing from one scripture to another. It can be difficult for you to follow me, but just write them down. Verse 14. Genesis 13, 14. Listen, and the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him, can you before Lot, what God said could not happen before he was he did separate himself from his uh, uh, father's house, from his uh, how can I say from in any 
kind of relation he had from his country. He had to be a Lord of God. And after Lot had separated from him, God was waiting. He didn't do what God had asked him to do. And when now God came back after Lot was gone, he said, now lift your eyes now. Now you can lift up your eyes. Look from the place where you are. Northwards, southwards, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. <coughs> God is asking, requesting for each one of us a total separation from the unbelief, from the sin, before He can use us according to His promise. Abraham had to obey what you did read in chapter 12. It was go out of your country. He did. From your family, he didn't do it. He took his dad and his nephew. And from your father's house, he sent his heart, the father with him. To a land that I will show you. So it is when the father passed away. Now, Lot, because of agreement with because between his uh this is uh, how I call it uh, his shepherd and uh, the one from Abraham. Helps men who can call them because I don't know if they had different kind of animals. So God now come back and said, Now, Lord. And the Lord said to Abraham, After it is important to notice, after uh, Lot had the separate from him, lift up your eyes now. Look at the country. Brothers and sisters, Abraham had a promise. And this promise was. His legal documents, if I can call it so. He could show it to people and say, You see, this is God said, this land is mine. The same with the church, I'm going to go with you through some promises. We have a legal document. This Bible is a book of love, book of promises, and it is a legal document for us that God gave, gave, has given us the land. We have our land, which we have to stand in. And when you stand on this land, you can claim it from the devil. You can say it is mine. God gave it to me. And you have to back up. You have to go back. To back up. You have to move away. You have to, to let it go. Because God gave it to me. And where is it written? It is here. It is given to the believers. So but Abraham, when he came, can read in Hebrews 11, verse 6 and so forth. He said they were living just under the tent. Why? He had a promise that a city was going to be built. And the Bible is saying he was looking for a city whom the builder is the God himself, he was taught, that is why he was living under the tent, and we were under the tent, it was easy to be moved around. You know when Jesus Christ, when he was speaking to Nicodemus, he told him, you can hear the wind blowing. You can hear it blowing, but you don't know where it is going, where it is coming from. So are the children of God when they are moved by the Holy Spirit. You must be like a soldier. Say, okay, pack up your things quickly, you pack them. And how you here you go. So God is using us in such a way. We don't have no permanent uh, residence here. We are just pilgrims, people, moving toward the city of God. And so, beloved, when God, Abraham, was called to a place of duty, he was going to be the one through whom God was going to perform things human beings could not believe. And by this, that was something he has to do to understand that God gave him everything. Even that the baby, the child was to come, this promised son, 
But the promised son was not there physically. Abraham had everything, all the blessings. But it was looking like he didn't have nothing. We are in the same position as a church. Living with God, working with God, mocking by, uh, by some people, but looking from God as the, the, the powerful people on earth. Personally, I have my testimony of those things about this Bible. Amen. Not this Bible, physical Bible, but this Word of God. When I saw it placed one day on a demoniac person, how the person was reacting. And we saw the, 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 not long ago, I forgot the country, which country it was again in Africa where there has this uh, fire which, uh, which destroyed all the building, but there were a Bible put on top of the laptop. The laptop was completely consumed, but the Bible didn't burn. Even, even the smoke, no, the Bible remained on a burning laptop without getting burned. It is like the, the tree which was in fire and could not be consumed in the time of Moses. The Bible is the word of God. And we have to understand it. And so Abraham, when he was here, he was the, the heir of the promise of God regarding what God was going to do. So he had the right to claim everything because he could say, this arm is mine. You are not supposed to take it for me. He could go and could claim it and he had the right. It is like today. We can see in uh, what we call us with Palestine, how the people are going. Oh, we must be a two nation land. Jews and the Palestinians, I heard, I uh, was uh, listening, uh, reading something, said the Palestinians are saying that we have a descendant of a Canaanite. But don't worry, the Canaanites were cursed by God, they were destroyed by God. The way remaining, uh, remaining, uh, remain people who stay there because of the of unbelief of the children of Israel. But God wanted to destroy them completely. If they were destroyed, yes, they cannot come to that cemetery. This land is ours. No. There is a legal document that this land had been given to the ch children of Abraham by God and uh, that is what we have to understand through the story we are reading just now. In Genesis 14, first to know that all the earth, the heaven, everything belongs to God. He is the owner of everything. I don't know if you notice for the, what we are reading in French, if you are following I me mean in English. When we did read in Genesis just now, chapter 14, when I was reading about when Abraham verse 18 to 19. Verse 19 to said that bless me Abraham, God uh, of God most high, possessor. In um, in uh, in French, that would let me check something here. Uh, it is written. Uh, Because they put some. Uh, okay, this not I don't see it. But I was on trying, trying to check. Sometimes I put in some scripture, excellent, explain things here. Okay. I said, uh, uh, God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. In French, it is written, Maître des cieux et de la terre. Maître. So it can be someone appointed. It can have some different, but when you say possessor, it is the owner. He is the owner of earth and he is the one who is possessing everything. 
So God is the possessor of heaven and earth. He is the possessor of everything we can search from heaven or on earth. And when he spoke to Abraham, he gave him the blessing. Abraham became the head of things God has. It is so deep to understand that sometimes the translation, English translation is a bit, a bit deeper than the French one. He said he's, he became the head of God. And if you take it in uh, the church self, in, um, okay, I can take it in Romans chapter 8. Let's take Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8, verse 16. He said, The uh, Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God. You see, if you are children of God, if children, if you are children, we are heirs of God. As Abraham was, he, he met this man, this high priest, Melchizedek. He said he didn't have no father, no mother, no beginning of days, no end of days. Who was he? It was God himself. And the person stayed alive until today. This is what the Bible is saying. Hebrews chapter 7 is explaining about it. He's still alive until today. He, he cannot die. Who cannot die? It is only God. And he came as a possessor of heaven and earth. And when Abraham received, accepted it, he became the heir of the promise of the son to come. Not only the son to come, but the promise of the promised land. This man was the king of Salem, which is Jerusalem. It is the Bible says it is the, uh, the city of the Most High. And the Bible is telling us in Roman here that we too, if you are children, so we are the heir of God, which means God gave us the promise, and the promise we are. We have an heritage from God. So we can stand upon the word of God and say that it is mine because it has been promised to me. <laughs> and when you get this legal document, so you can have a, the authority to stand in fast in presence of the Lord of the devil and tell him, let it go. It is mine. I always, when I was, uh, I don't know how old I was at the time, 16, 15, I don't know. My dad had a lorry. And I was living there in the boarding school, you know, away from uh, the cities. We were just in the, what I can call the bush. And when you could have a relative coming to visit you, oh, what a joy, because you said, oh, I'm getting fresh food or fresh money. And one day, what did I see? Our lorry coming said, Oh my, my dad was not there. It was only the driver with uh, the other workers. I told them I need some money. Now the driver told me no. I said, What? I said, Excuse me. I said, I need money. He refused to give me money. I said, Okay, go. No, why? Because I was a child. And the Bible is saying, a child, when we are a, a, a son of God, when the child is like a servant. When I came back, I said, Dad, you driver. I needed money. He didn't want to give me money. I don't know what my dad told him. He didn't have a right. Because I was a child, he behaved like a But if it was a, like today, he could not stand to inform him. My president said something like that. So what I say here, we got promises we can stand on and say, now this is mine. And God wants all his children to grow up and to, to claim the right in the presence of the enemy that this is not yours, it is mine. Well, let it go. 
and he have to let it go. That is why he said, I'm giving you the power to cast away the dead demons. We don't have to negotiate with them, no. He said, okay, move out. And we have to move. Because it is the promise, the authority given through the word of God, that we can stand there, and that is how we can even be perseverant in what we are doing, because you know it is ours. You know, Israel is not, why well, they are not living there, the Palestine now. Because they know, even though they don't have a, a, a written document by David and um, uh, how called how is this man called again? This man who uh, 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 who sold the piece of land to to David? Le uh, uh, How what is his name again? Erna, Erna Le Jebusien. What is Le Jebusien? Even we don't have a written document saying between David and uh, this uh, uh, this uh, Jebusien in French. But they know that the land was sold to, uh, to, to David. And even where Abraham buried his wife, it was being sold to Abraham it was not for free. So the place belonged to the father. They don't have the documents, but they say, through the promise of God, it is verse. When God is proving that the land is verse, because God is defending them against the enemies. Now, this is the strong statement that we have the hair of all, a believer is the hair of all the promises written in this book. It is our legal document. And to do it, you have first to come to God and to be a believer. If you go, let's take the Psalm 80. Psalm 18. <clears throat> In Psalm 18, <clears throat> I'm going to start with verse, uh, uh, verse uh, um, 7. Even six, no, certain six. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry came before him even to his ears. That is when you know who is your father. The question here it is to know how your relation. Or your relation, uh, not relation, I prefer to say relation, is with God. Who is God for you and who God is? Amen. Who are you in the sight of the Lord? I will say, I in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple. And my cry came before him even to his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundation of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. One of his children was being aggressed and God was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and he and devouring fire from his mouth Calls were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. Now I'm going to verse 16. He sent from above. He took me and drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Amen. Amen. You see, there's something we have to understand our relation with God. 
God came to deliver David because he had a, an interest in his life. <laughs> David loved God. Before calling upon God, you must know you right in his presence. You must come to him and say, Lord, it is you who gave me this promise. It is you who done this. If you can say that God has forgotten it, he cannot forget. But let's say you speak like human being. Maybe he was he had forgotten it, but my cry came into his ears. And from his temple, he hears it. Because the Bible is saying, when the humble cry, the Lord hears it. And he came to, to the rescue. And now he's saying something very important, verse 26. In English it is uh, from 25. With the merciful you will show yourself merciful. This is God. With the one who is merciful, God will be merciful to you. With a blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With a pure, you will show yourself pure. And with a devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people, but will bring down haughty looks. This is important to understand. When you come to before God, show the purity of your heart. Show that you can now be merciful too. Present these things to God before you can come and to claim some things from God. Even the devil knows it. If you don't work according to God's words, he knows it. And you cannot come and say that I'm, 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 I'm casting, uh, casting you out. In the name of like the seven sons of Shiva. In the name of Jesus, let her preach Paul. So yes, we know Paul. We know Jesus Christ. But you, who are you? The devil knows it. Don't come to charge us to, 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 to bring up quotation. How it is written. It's, but where are you? What are those quotation in your heart? He knows it. And they know it. So that is very important. But we have a hair of seeing, uh, seeing uh, visible things and the invisible things. All those things are, are uh, kept in the word of God for the true believers to receive them and to live upon them. So that is why <clears throat> coming not to be perseverant in the Things of God. I'm going first to read you something. Moses, uh, I don't know if you can go on the lap, uh, on uh, if you yeah, can okay, look at the uh, way we have it, uh, the downloads in the right corner. I don't see it here. The downloads, yes. Uh, do you see? Uh, there's a message processing everything. God's here can see it. It's the last one I was reading today. Today? I was reading it today. There is nothing from today. It's on Google or Microsoft Edge. It was on Google. I was. The month of no, no. Yeah, no, just, just, just go to just go to Google self, close everything because I want to get a lot of mess here. This is a very download from Google today. Go to Google self, yes. I want to read something here. Yeah. Go to yes, like that, yeah. And then go to William Burnham. Okay, okay. Thank you, you have that one. Okay. Go to 62. 
or you can just put type in the processing. They don't have it very easily because it's called computer. No process, not processing, but processing. Go. Press and go. 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 No, press and go. Yes. Uh, go to uh, this sign here where you... No, yeah, that one. Okay. I'm going to read something. Go to paragraph uh, 59. If you make it a bit uh, zoomy, please. If you go on top layer, uh, yeah, plus, 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 59. <coughs> yeah. I want us to read together. Uh, go even, let's go to 56 too. 56. If you don't mind if you read a little bit, a bit. Uh, yeah. And today the true believer is cast out from among the people called a fanatic, holy brother or some kind of an insulting name, some kind of a religious fanatic, and yet is heir to behold heaven and earth. Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. Oh my, talk about push you out in a cabin or somewhere, and hardly enough money to pay your rent. You see, this is the life of a believer. Yet you own it all. You see, you're seeing the riches on the earth. You don't have any, even money. You cannot even, uh, 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 how can I say, afford it. But you are still, you are the owner of all those things. Amen. Have to work and, and toil and sweat for a few dollars to make an honest living, to put shoes on your children's feet, and to feed the little hungry mouth. And yet, own. Oh, Hell to everything that is here. The meek shall inherit the earth. The possessity, the possessity. Oh my, I like that. Possessor of the earth. What is? Yeah. The believer. The believer has a title, what I said. A fact deed. That is right. By Jesus Christ. That he shall be the possessor of this entire universe. That is right, the make sure inherit the earth. This is just for the physical things. He's talking about a believer, you're struggling, toiling in this world to, to live, to pay our rent, to, to buy some clothes or to do whatever. While you are the, 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 the heir, or you are the possessor of those things you are looking for. But let's continue. There's something I want you to, to understand. Which is going to, to, to put us uh, with our two feet in the word of the Lord. Abraham had, had could possess that land because uh, what was on it and what was on it. God gave it to him, and Lot was a part of that land. So Abraham had a word to it. He could he could call or lay hold on it. He said, now God, you made me the promise that what was this land and all in it was mine. And you made a promise, now my kinsman has been taken and all his, his God is gone. He's saying that because of the promise of God, even Lot was a portion of his below, below him. He was living in everybody in that land, that land was his possession. This is what he's meaning here. In the other words, listen, if I would play, uh, I would apply it today, sorry, I would say, the church could say, Lord, God, here is my brother. He's laying here, stricken with cancer, or he's stricken with tuberculosis. He's got so and so. I lay hold of a promise. It is my possession. You told me so, amen. There you are, then you. You can go after that enemy, the devil, and slaughter it, just the same as Abraham slaughtered the kings and brought back his possession. Amen. I would like that. It is to the believer. 
it is a message to the believer. Now, yet Abraham had a right to the promise. And the promise was his. Yet he had to fight to possess it. It is where it was coming. Amen. There you are. The believer today. Yet we are here to all things. Yet we are here to every spiritual blessing, every physical blessing, every blessing the Bible promises. Yet you have to fight every inch of it. That is the way that God, that is the way God's got it set up. It's always been that way. You have to fight to possess what you know is yours. You have to fight to possess it. And that is what we have to do now. I'm going to stop. I'm going to go back. What he's saying here, God knows that those things are yours. This is like a promised land. It was so easy, if I can say so. So God to take the children out of Egypt and just wipe the land, say, okay, go. The land is yours. But we had to go to fight to get the land. The same way today, I have to fight not to be arguing with people, not to be fighting uh, with people. I have to do everything to be an uh, uh, honest man, to be not lying, to be not cheating, to be. I have to fight again to, to reach those things. It is what the people who are the, uh, teaching this uh, grace, uh, according to the understanding, are mistaking. God is putting you back to show you his power. Go and fight for your right. It is yours, but go and move the Canaanite out of your land. It is yours, but you have to go to tell them to move out. God left them there for you to, to show you the power of his word. But he says that you have to fight for them. And to fight when you know that it is you, you belong in your possession, so you can yeah, you have a right position. Suppose today, uh, uh, let's, let's uh, say today I, I, I go back home in my homeland. My dad left some portion of land there, and people are living there. Let's say that it took time, and then they say, okay, now uh, the people didn't come back. This place can belong to us. And I come now and say, okay, now it is time for you to move out. We say, no. I have a nigga talking about. I have a right to tell them, no. By the blood and the honor of his place, you cannot take it. I have, we have to fight for those things. And for me to stand them, to tell them that we have to move out and to be determined to move them out, I have to have this. Something in me telling me it is yours. Don't move away. It is yours. Don't let them get it. It is yours. That is what he's saying here. And God always does it like that. Everything which is ours, you know, even getting this uh, Holy Spirit, we could say in a human, human way, it was so easy if God did say, okay, just give him, uh, let them get uh, you. Uh, the Holy Spirit ain't simple. He said, no, you have to stand for the Holy Spirit. You have to seek for it. You have to need, say, God, I need this Holy Spirit. I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You have to tell it to God. God, I want it, I want it, I want it. And the one who's putting the desire in your heart to look for it, it is God. And when he tells you that the, the devil can stand up, block you on the way, he said, no, I won't let go. I want this Holy Spirit. I want to be born again. I'm tired working in sin. I'm tired lying. I'm tired doing the best that now I want to be here to have his holy nature on me. That is why I said we have to fight for those things. You see, even though in the normal life, when you, a woman and a man get married and start living together, they have to fight to have a Peaceful house, peaceful home. It is not because of the oh, they love one another so much that everything, the devil is coming after you. And if you want to have this uh, peaceful place, 
this one has, you must find a wisdom from God how to do evil things to bring God in your midst so the devil cannot get in. Everything we have to fight. We have to fight for them. And that is why I said you have to be a servant. I remember one man I met in Coventry, he was telling me one day, I think they are divorced now from what I heard, I'm not sure. Uh, they were have some, having some problems in the home with his wife. And you know how it can be so, so bitter sometimes. And uh, so he looked at his wife, he told me, Paul, I told her, look, listen, can you remember when you, when you used to wait for me under the trees? Can you go back to the love you had for me in the first days? If you can get back to the place, so the problem which I see here won't be there no more. What is it? It is what the devil wants to move us away from those things. But we have to understand that they are ours. And now as a human, sometimes you took the nature of the devil. And when something happened, the first and easy thing you find that you, we think that we can do, it is the separation. I don't want this woman no more. I don't want this man no more. I those children are okay, out of my out of my sight. Things like that. No. We must understand who is fighting us and do everything we can do to take him out. It is like when you are sick. You won't say, okay, now I'm tired of it. Okay, just die. No. Everybody's fighting because we want to recover from the weakness of the body and to become strong again. So we have to fight. We have to, to stand because God gave us everything. Let's go to, let's go to some promises God gave in this book. I did write some down, there are so many, but uh, I just want to read some, some promises God gave to the church. We know the one we did read already about Matthew 7, 7, the seek and we find. This is the promise God gave to the children of God. If you don't stand by seeking, Jesus Christ gave a, a, this, uh, uh, this example of uh, this uh, widow woman who came and knew knocking by the door of this uh, judge uh, uh, who didn't have no fear of God. She said she kept knocking, knocking, and finally the judge was fed up. He said, okay, let me, please, I'll give her what she's asking so that we have peace. God is asking his children to keep knocking on the door. Let's take John chapter 14. John 14. I'm just going to take some promises. <clears throat> we are plenty, the Bible is full of promises of God. John 14 from verse 13. Jesus Christ is saying this. And whatever you ask in my name. I think people are not paying too much attention to what God said. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. This is a written check given to the children of God. Let's say that not with really. He signed it. And now you have that to, to, to fill it with whatever you want. He didn't say what. He said, okay, if you ask me only bread, don't ask for fish. No, he didn't say that. He said, whatever you ask, bread and fish and salad and whatever you want, put them on the check. And we'll do it. Who is believing in it today. Who is doing it? You can hear people talking about a lot of things. Oh, I know this. I know this mystery. I know that I can do it. But there are simple things in the Bible. What, whatever you ask in my name. I want to hear the testimonies of people in the church saying that me, I didn't ask this. God get me. Me, I didn't pray that God get me. Where are those things? 
Nobody standing with determination to what God said. But it is the proof that you are having a good relation with God. The book is written. We, poss we are possessing everything. We have held all the promises of God. Where the church is, where is the church standing today? Where are, where is this God? I can say it like a Gideon. If God is with us, where are all those miracles? We don't see them. We don't see those things no more. People are saying we are church of God, but we don't see God in the church. We are pretending to, to, to be. God is not in the midst, people. He's now the God of the Old Testament again. He's not like some churches are preaching. No, he's not performing miracles like he used to do. No, it is over. We don't know. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And now, chapter 15, let's remain in John, verse 7. There is the, 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 the key thing. When you're asking something to God, you have to have this in you. If you abide in me, is the word. And my words abide in you. You will ask what, what you desire and it shall be done for you. Otherwise, we can see anybody coming a sinner and said, okay, now I want this, uh, this donkey to be changed to a, to a jaguar. You see, there's people playing with the word of God. No, God never leave his word in the hand of a man. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, it is me in you, you in me. So now, ask whatever you want. Let's read it again. You will ask what you desire and shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. There's a, there's a condition. Keep the word, you abide in Christ, in Christ abide in you. So now you can ask whatever you want, and that will be given to you. This is how we can process everything. How Paul can say, look, they're looking at us like poor men, but we are rich. Like if you don't have nothing but you, we have everything. We are the heir of all the promises of God. So why we are not seeing those things? The church lost something somewhere. I'm saying about the body of church of God today, which we are seeing in our midst. Let's continue. As I say that, I'm just going to read some promises. Chapter 16, verse 24. He said this. And... Uh, Let's say from verse 23. And in the day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Whatever. He didn't, he didn't say accept this or accept that. No. Whatever you ask to my Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. This is another check signed already. Said, okay, just put the amount you want on it. So with why you don't see those things in our midst, we have to be perseverant when you know our rights. I'm the child of God. Jesus Christ knew who he was. John the Baptist knew who he was. He could just identify himself through the scriptures. So to be perseverant, I have to... It is like you, you come to my house. I'm not there. You find my children of one of my sons or my daughter and try to kick him out of the house. So this is not your house. How a child can look at you and say, Sir, you are not in your uh, the missus, you are not in your right mind. This is my house belonging to my parents. He, he knows or she knows where she be, she, she's living. When she enter, or he enter the house and no ask her, what are you doing here? No. It is, he, I cannot, uh, if I ask it, so which means my mind self is not normal. 
So the Bible is saying here, it is saying, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Whatever you are sick, you are, you have any kind of problem, so go to God and speak to him. And receive it, he liked to hear his children pleading, calling him, say, come and show your power. You know, we have this hymn saying that we call it a, a mighty, mighty conqueror. It is in, in Chiluba, in another language in, 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 in Congo. Say, stand up and rise and work this triumphant march among your children. So we want to call him, come and work. So the enemy can just fly, uh, uh, run away. That is what the Bible is calling us for. That is why we don't have a result. We are, we are supposed to see in our midst because we don't put in practice those things because the faith is not there. But uh, the heads are full of knowledge, knowledge without, uh, without uh, uh, I mean, uh, with fruits. In First John, I just want to not to keep you too long. First John chapter chapter five. We cannot go to God and start to play uh, those things. Oh God, do this and do that. No, we have to respect what is good. How can we get anything if my words abide in you and you, you abide in me? Ah, the time ask whatever you want, God will give it to you. Possessing everything. Chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, I'm going to read from verse 14 to verse 15. Now, now this is the confidence that we have in him. That, listen, if we ask anything according to his will, you understand? It is not that, okay, I'm waking up this morning, okay, uh, what is, uh, what I want? I want to eat some eggs and bacon and, uh, and uh, toast. No. No, God is not... Uh, there to, to be played with. If really I'm hungry and I'm starving, I'm somewhere, can I say, Lord, can you give me some bread, some bacon? He can give me. But now I'm just playing like a, 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 a spoiled baby, saying, okay, God, this morning, um, what I'm going to eat? There's some toast and there's some egg. No, 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 no. He said that and we know that uh, now this is the confidence that we have in him. We, we have a confidence in him. So we should not can stand against the enemy. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heals us. It is it's very important. Amen. He heals what I'm saying because it is according to his will. Amen. Even the Holy Spirit comes to our prayers, helping us through the... Um, how can I say... Um, the spot, two silent whispers in the way, such a way that we know what to ask to God. We are not asking things just to please ourselves. You know, sometimes even preaching here, sometimes when things come out of the mouth, said, Who? You don't talk in my mind. I'm saying things which are, were not in my mind. Say, so, Whoa, oh, I know myself that it was not me. And the Holy Spirit comes to whispers. Teaching us what to say. And he said it here. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, if he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. If we are sure that he hears us, whatever we ask, whatever we ask, God is going to fulfill. It is so important. That is what is given. When he gives you that, that, even so, if God said that you have to wait a thousand years, it doesn't matter. Because you know that he has you. And your case is in front of him, as we saw it in, in the book of Job. So the, his justice has spoken already. The time is not counting no more. Because you know that he has you what you said. He's not, he's, he's not deaf, he's not blind. He heard what you said. Now what you can, that can give you the confidence, the patience that God is going to operate or perform what you ask. 
Let me read it. One scripture here. It is different in French. That is why I'm going to read it here. In Hebrew chapter 11. And then you're going to stop. I said, Bobby is reading in French. Today I'm preaching in English. So compare what I'm going to say now with what is written in the French Bible. But I'm mentioning it here. Verse 6 from Hebrews 11. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, to please God. For he who, no, for he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligently is missing in French. And this is important. Diligently means to be persistent, earnestly committed, fervent, sincere. You are, you are persevering. This is perseverance. So which means you are consistent, diligently, he is a rewarder of us who, with perseverance, look after him. Uh, <laughs> you uh, see, check in French. It is not written. He just said that in French, he is a he, he remunerator of those who are searching. But he with perseverance. Can you see the difference? He is the remunerator of those who are searching. But in English, we say that he is with perseverance. <laughs> You cannot receive something from God if you don't. You are not persistent. If you are not, God wants to see that you are trusting Him. You are not shaken. You are not doubting. You are, even though if it takes a thousand years, you can say believing in God. God said, I can deal with this boy, with the son of my daughter. Diligent. Who? He is a rewarder of us who diligently seek Him. You trust in his word. You believe in his word. You stand for what is true. No matter in what, if everything else crumbles around you, you say, me in God, I trust. <laughs> and God said, okay, now my man, my child is mature now. Now we can use him. No, not, not just seeking today, you say, okay. I went for uh, one year ago, I didn't get this, this, uh, uh, this uh, child I was looking at, a barren woman. Oh, uh, uh, no, 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 no. You diligently seek him. You see what the brother just really was telling us lately? I seen his testimony. I was thinking about it again. The baby was dead in the mom's womb. The parents, for them it was over. It was the third time it was happening. So it is going to be like the, the, the first two times. Now we have to, to go to bear with that baby. But God didn't say his words. When the prayer was done, the, the heart stopped beating again. That is to show how God wants his children to stand for what is right and what is true. But that is why if you know you are right, if you know that you are a true believer, don't look at what is outside, the consequences or the circumstances, or anybody saying it is impossible ever. No, just trust in God, and God will provide for the rest. I always give up to finish. To, uh, the, when I went to, to school, to the boarding school, we slept. Two first years in our time, it was a general teaching. Everybody was in the same group. So you didn't choose yet which, which branch you were going to study. After the year one, it was year seven, year, year, uh, year eight in England. For year nine, you have to choose. If you want to do the sciences, or you want to do the uh, literature, li li uh, literature, all those kind of things, you have to choose. So the people who did go already in sciences, they used to make the young children afraid. Say, oh, the little boy, don't choose it, you're going to be crazy. We're coming with for some, uh, something in, in, in here at the final years, five or uh, five, it is 11 or 12. 
to tell you how I just finished in year, year, year seven. Say, if you choose it, you are going to be crazy. It is so hard. And people, we are troubling at that. So, before going to year, uh, year uh, nine, we had to pass a test. In our time, we had to pass a test. So, we were deciding you can go to sciences. So, you have to put your choice. My first choice is this. My second is that one. So I went, I was so troubled. I said, I wanted to do sciences, but I was afraid of, according to what everybody was saying. So I put my first choice, okay. Uh, but, uh, to, to be a teacher, to, uh, we have a good food to be teachers. And second, science. So we done the test, and then we went for the holidays. We came back, when we came back, but he put the, the result on the board, everybody could see. And I came, I find myself, they put me in the science, my God. I said, but if you want to, I went to the, to the office, I said, listen, my first choice was to go, not to do what I call pedagogic uh, uh, um, direction. And the man who was there, he knew, he knew me. He said, listen, what do you He went in the office, he found my, my copies. He looked at them, he came out. Oh, I'm grateful to that man until this day. He said, Paul, he shouted at me, he shouted at me. Said, you had such high uh, uh, um, score in, in your math, and you are telling me you, are, you cannot do sciences. Said, go out of here. He just, just he said, don't come back here again. Go to do sciences. Said, oh, but his name was Theo. I said, Theo. Anyhow, I went. I was shocked, but you know, until today, I could not do it. What, what I was going to do because I was afraid. And when I get there, I start learning. I understood, I could understand what the people who, they were afraid because it, they could not understand themselves. themselves. How they didn't know that me, I was not going to understand it. It is how the, the theft is. God is revealing you his words step by step. So he, he went over, oh, it is hard. It was hard for them. But when I wish it was not hard, I was even the first of the class, I was just looking and said, look, if I did. I was going to listen to those people and I was going to go in the wrong direction. May God be blessed and bless us in our way. Let's pray because I know that my wife will be going to time. I need to go to pick up a child coming from the from Netherlands. Our Lord and our Father, we are so grateful to you for your grace and for your mercy. For giving us, Lord, this grace to believe that you are the one, Lord, who is rewarded for the one who was seeking you with uh, diligence, Lord. Not looking aside, Lord, but just keeping the faith in you, trusting and accepting, Lord, that the, the opponent can come against us, but we know in whom we believe. You gave us this legal document, Lord, as the brother of the prophet was calling it, the, the abstract deed. This, uh, legal document saying that you are the heir of all the promises of God. You said everything you ask in your name it will be granted to us. Lord, let me believe such a thing, Lord, and go live my life of Christian in a peaceful way, knowing that my God, my Father, who knows everything, has planned already all my journey from the beginning until the end. And nothing will stop it until the day I stand in his presence. So, Lord, bless each one of us, Lord. Give us that faith, that good understanding, Lord, and so that we can, Lord, be uh, joyful, help, uh, happy, I mean, happy uh, believers, trusting in you, Lord, and seeing your word being performed in our midst, Lord, and, uh, and uh, go and with, uh, the, the testifying to the people who are unbelievers, telling them there's hope. There's joy, there's peace, there's long suffering, there's calm, there's all the things the world cannot provide, provided, Lord, for the believers by the word of grace and the word of the, Lord, the God of, uh, of love. We commit everything in your hand, Lord. And thanking you for the meeting for today. As we just are dismissing now and praising, praising you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Because I had to stop for that day because we have to go to pick up the child. Oh. Okay.
Igen, de ez a vele ott kifűnésik volt. Nem volt, hiszem én.